Now what we'll do here is what we always do in the spot of the course. We'll divide our ring up into little pieces and then add up the pieces to work out the total magnetic field at some point. In this case what we're going to do is we're going to divide them little segments around here. So that we'll have a, a length delta L. And we're going to add up all the little bits all the way around. And to make it simple, let's just try and work out the magnetic field on the axis. So let's pick a point at the axis at some location Z. Then what we need to do is work out the vector here. is R. We've got a bit of current going through up there and that will give us a magnetic field which is going to be pointing the currents this way and the R vectors this way. It's going to be perpendicular to both so it's going to go off in that direction somewhere where that's a right angle there. So it's going to be the delta B caused by this little delta L of the loop over there. And then we're going to add that up as we go all the way around the circle. OK, so how can we calculate that? Well, the coordinates of this little bit over here is going to be our cos theta, our sine theta 0. Whereas the coordinates over here are 0, 0, z. So the vector r is going to be the end point minus the beginning point. So it's going to be 0 minus r cos theta. 0 minus r sine theta. And z minus 0. So that's our r vector. And we can use Pythagoras to work out uh, the uh, mod r squared. Now, integrating over that's going to be a bit complicated because lots of trigonometry is going to get all messy. So you take one look at this and say, hmm, looks a bit messy. Can we simplify things a bit? Well, in this case, there's a quite a bit of symmetry to help us. Every bit of this loop is going to produce a similar magnetic field. But if you think about it, all the components in the x and y direction are bound to cancel out because it's symmetrical. So this bit over here is pushing in the sort of somewhere between the x and y direction, but that's going to be precisely balanced by a bit on the other side, which will have a line like this, and a field going this direction. And so the x and y components will cancel out, leaving just the z component. And this will be true wherever we take it. So we have a bit up here, a bit up there. In all cases, the x and y components of the magnetic field are going to cancel out, leaving us just a pure field along the axis. So that's rather helpful. It means we don't have to calculate the x and y components, which have all these complicated causes and signs in them. We just have to calculate the z component. And we can make things even simpler still. Because if you notice, every single little element of the ring is the same distance from our point here. Which means they're all going to give us the same amplitude of the magnetic field here. The x and y coordinates are going to vary, but the z component will always be the same. So what that means is, any little slice with a given delta theta in there is, is going to produce the same delta B Z over here. So what we can do is just use the simplest one. The simplest one might be one that's sitting right here on the Y axis. So let's pick our little delta L over there. So the delta L is going to point this way, which is in the minus X direction. And let's work out the Z component to the magnetic field due to this bit over here. And it will be the same from any other bit of the same thickness anywhere around.